What? Oh. No. No, no. We're all about kettlebells. So if you are into kettlebells, then like the video and consider subscribing. Karolin Girvan's kettlebell workout set up millions of views. So that's one of the reasons why we want to keep reacting and see how she does it and see what we can learn from her form. If you know anyone that I should react to, then let me know down in the comments. This workout sits at the 15 minute mark, which I think is great because many people are looking for possibilities and options that don't require a lot of time, yet give a lot of bang for the buck. And the kettlebell lends itself perfectly for that situation. So as far as I'm concerned, I think she got a 16 kg kettlebell right there. And there's one thing that I wanna show you right from the get-go is we have a philosophy that we call respect the weights and Pavel calls it treat the kettlebell like it's loaded and the funny thing is many people do this automatically because we're not used to it so when you handle and grab a heavier kettlebell like i mentioned i think this is a 16 kg the best thing for you to do is to bring the kettlebell into the backswing and bring it up so you can immediately start connecting to your hips and start working with your hips the strongest muscles that you have now checking out the goblet squats i like it knees is out chest is up fairly solid Great. Always want to make sure that you keep the kettlebell close to your body and your upper body wants to be as upright as possible because a goblet squat is nothing less than a front squat. And when you do a front squat, the biomechanics always change. And the way she drops it, I don't like it because how can you drop the kettlebell safely? I have two options. The first one is the non-ballistic one, where you have the kettlebell up in the rack, and then you switch grip, you grab the handle, and then you slowly put it down. Always think about lifting with your hips. The second way is the ballistic way. You throw the kettlebell down, grab it, go into a backswing, and then drop it. Because if you start bending your back, like we always talk about, when you have heavier weights, this may lead to problems down the road. Now, how does she start with the swing? Let's see. Now she starts in the middle. You see that? And then she loses balance a bit. Now, when you start in the middle, this is how you start for a deadlift. Because then you have the kettlebell inside the center of mass, and then you start working accordingly. Now, if you have the kettlebell inside your center of mass and you want to go ballistic, then we always say you want to start in a so-called triangle, where you have the kettle kettlebell in front of you approximately half a meter your feet form the bottom of the triangle and the kettlebell forms the top of the triangle the reason why we do it is so we don't have to waste the first rep we can pull the kettlebell right into the backswing and then start working let's check out how she does the swing yeah a little bit i think she stands a little bit too wide make sure you stand a little bit closer and she kind of over exaggerates the hip so she's hyper extending the back to a certain degree you fully extend the hip and you stop right there don't go too far when you are working with a swing like this however there's one particular thing that i want to mention there is a technique that we call the rack position or that we call lever mechanics where you are using your body like a lever and then you start leaning back a little bit but you don't start hyperextending the hip. Your whole spine is locked and then you use your body, especially your upper body as a lever. So here she goes with a lunge where she's kind of like losing balance a little bit. Uh, it's an exercise that I don't think that you have to do. Um, as you can see, she's wobbly. She's wobbly a little bit. This can happen. I'm not saying that if some, if, if it, whoops. <laughs> Be careful, Carolyn. Be careful. I'm not saying that this cannot happen. Sometimes when you are in a workout, this may happen. But in her case, it's a little bit too intense. So don't do this. Don't do this. Just do a regular lunge and they do a reverse lunge. I think a reverse lunge is even 
better for people who are not used to kettlebell training because that before we're then stepping back with the kettlebell sideways for some people we see it in our practice some people have real big trouble with this but with a reverse lunge they fare much better don't do this pass on the stuff because as you can see you're losing balance it's not worth it what i always say is if you do balance stuff keep that separated from your strength stuff now she calls this exercise the uneven lunge now funny thing is this is actually a split squat some people sometimes uh, confuse it. This is not a lunge because a lunge is technically speaking, right? A lunge is when you go into a lunge and then you come back into your solid stand shoulder width apart. If you stay in the lunge and you keep bending your knees or you keep working in that same spot, this is what we call a split squat, just to be technically correct. But I like it, I like it, yeah, great form. So here she goes with the Rom Romanian deadlift. What? Oh. No. No, no. She always has this hyperextension going on. I think that's a pattern that she has throughout the kettlebell movements. And that's one thing that we always see is when people are used to a certain kinesthetic movement, they do it on the regular. So she starts with the hinge. I like it. But now she keeps her arms bent. Extend your arms. You don't have to bend them. And then now from here on, oh, you can see this perfectly. Do you see this? From here on, she is exclusively using her spine to move. She probably believes I have to go as low. Now, when you work heavier weights, and that's what you can do when you have a deadlift, a Romanian or a normal deadlift, because this works your strongest muscles, be careful with this because if you go down too far, again, may lead to problems for your lower back. You don't have to do this. Keep your arms extended, go down, and that's it. That's what a lot of people always be like, you know, we got to do multiple exercises, 25 exercises in five minutes. You don't have to do it. Most bang for your buck exercises as she is doing deadlifts, swings, rows, presses, that's the only thing that you need. So I like the exercise selection. And if you do this workout throughout your whole year and nothing else, you're safe. Because these kind of exercises give you the most bang for your buck. Actually, what I like is when you press the kettlebell like this, and then you go up. I call this the chop clean, right? I, yeah, the chop, the chop press, I call this. Because what you're actually engaging is in is some additional chest work because you got to keep the kettlebell together you got to press it together and this may work some of your chest to a certain degree so when you come up what i would like to see is to keep it fully extend fully extend the elbows and the shoulders it's also a question of mobility many people are tight in the lats and the shoulders but if you're able to and if you work on that mobility the idea is to keep it fully extended why do i not like the upright row because the upright row may cause problems in your shoulders you have to imagine there are some anatomical bony structures in your shoulder that when you start engaging your arms like this and then you pull up it may be that certain structures connect with each other and this may lead to pain that's why i even don't like the american swing because it goes into the same idea done boom now on a final note if you have discovered kettlebells through carolyn's videos and you're like wow i love it and now you stumbled over this video and you're like what does this guy have to say about my favorite coach the reason why i do these reactions on influencers and people like carolyn is i want to give beginners especially a proper perspective on the unique potential that the kettlebell has and what it can provide and its pitfalls because if you engage in certain movement patterns that certain influences exhibit this may lead to problems down the road and the kettlebell is such a powerful tool that i want you to engage in the kettlebell properly correctly and the way it was intended to be used. 90 Days of Kettlebells is an online workout course for beginners who want to train at home, lose weight and achieve lasting results without wasting time and money with crash diets 
and unused gym memberships. The program works as follows. You will do three kettlebell workouts per week that gradually increase in difficulty. You'll also build three powerful eating habits that have proven successful in our coaching. As the name implies, the program lasts 90 days and you will have lifelong access after purchase. We also include live accountability sessions where you will publicly state your goals. Psychology shows us that if we make our goals public, our adherence to the process and the program increases dramatically. If you have been struggling to put together an elaborate kettlebell workout system while trying to lose weight, then 90 days of kettlebells is for you. The price of 90 days of kettlebells is 59 US dollars per month for three months, and you can save 20% with a one-time payment of 147 US dollars. We'll open registration only to a small number Number of new clients. Join the waiting list now to get access 24 hours before the general public. Link is in the description.